Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to make corned beef, brisket, and cabbage, and we're going to do it in the Dutch oven. So y'all stay tuned. So, I really don't know why everyone always waits to St. Patrick's Day to have corned beef and cabbage. It is a great dish to make any time of the year. Uh, it's a beautiful spring day here in Northeast Florida today. The place is a, a swamp. It's been raining here constantly. Uh, I know a lot of you folks uh, are under so, uh, really bad weather, especially out west. But today, it couldn't be more perfect to be out in the outdoor kitchen and cook up something great for you guys. So we got this great corned beef brisket. I've got a whole one, a whole packer uh, from Restaurant Depot. And I already gave part of this away to my brother because it was way too much for me. So what we're going to do with it first, I'm going to show you, is how I'm going to trim and separate the point from the flat. So here's what's remaining of my, my, uh, my packer corned beef brisket. And uh, there's where we sliced off about six inches for my brother. And that is your flat. Okay, it's got this band of fat on top. Now, I don't like to trim too much of this off, but we will trim a little off that flat. But what, it, but more importantly, I wanted to show you is this port up here is your point, and that's going to be fattier than the flat. And you can definitely see if you look very closely, the grain of the meat in the point is running one direction, and the grain of the meat in the flat is running in other directions. So you can kind of see this delineation right here, and there's a seam of fat under there that separates these two muscles. And I'm gonna to try to show you us getting in there and separating it right down that seam of fat. All right, now I nicked the meat a little right there, and I can see that that's running this way. So that's the flat, a little too deep. So I'm gonna come up a little. All right, and then here, you can see that it's running the other direction. That little seam is right there. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of just peeling this, the point back, following that seam there, and now we're all the way to just plain old fat. So on that end, come on down here. Just rolling it back. Then we'll see if either one of these has got enough meat on it. I know the flat does. This point may be better off used for something else. Just do its shape. All right, so there's my point, which I didn't get a lot, okay? And it depends on your brisket, whether you're gonna get a lot or a little. And it has a lot of fat. Let's go ahead and just start pulling some of that back. See if there's anything in our point that's worth saving for this dish. Oh, by the way, we did get one of those little spice packs in there. I'm not going to be using that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and work on this. It doesn't look like our point is going to be that great on this particular brisket. But I'm going to trim it up and then I'll let you see it once I get it all trimmed. flat is right here it has a nice grain running through it this way for corned beef I don't really worry about taking all this little silver skin off like we would if we're doing a brisket normally we would come in here and go underneath all this little stuff here and get all that off but I don't want to remove the fat today so all right we're gonna leave it in place if there's some places that are really thick or that you just don't like, or if you want to do this all, you know, yourself, then go ahead and do it. But you just put your blade of knife under there, and kind of angle it up. It'll take that off for you. Um, it makes this we already got started. We might as well go ahead and finish. All right. So we're gonna get most of that uh, off there if you want to. The other side, I'm leaving a little bit of the fat. This one was kind of hacked it up a little bit. 
but that's fine I want a good layer of fat on there there's a little piece of the point right there that's gonna be fine and I believe this will fit in our Dutch oven so we're going to I got the fire going behind me the charcoal we're using B&B &B today and we're gonna set up for bottom heat only I'll do that next So those coals are nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and spread them out on my Dutch oven table where I'm gonna again use our one line method. We're gonna start off needing bottom heat. And Cabela is getting over here. She's gonna get burned with the fallen bits. Put this back on here. All right, so we just laid those out there and we're gonna keep them kind of in one line. You see the ones that you had on the top over here are not quite as lit as the ones that were on the bottom. So this is going to be the hotter end. Let's go ahead and start preheating our Dutch oven. I'm putting on the number 12. I wish I had a 14 today. Uh, one of the very few times I thought I could actually use a 14. I'm go ahead and get it on there. Get it warmed up. So let's go over the other ingredients you're going to need for this dish. As usual with Dutch oven cook and I'm starting out with some chopped bacon we have and then the rest of these ingredients are going to be coming in for our cabbage pores so we got some onions I got about half one there is another full one. I'm going to go ahead and cut that up I got uh, five Irish potatoes I picked the smallest ones I had in a bag probably just for sake of time I'm probably going to cut these in half then I have uh, about a half of a green cabbage I was going to use some Chinese cabbage I just picked that from the garden yesterday but I know you guys are probably not going to have that this time of year. Um, so regular half a green cabbage. I got some uh, spicy mustard. Now I didn't have it today so I took regular yellow mustard, ground mustard seeds and mixed it in with them until it tasted right. I mean, it, it tasted cool there. Uh, really nice and spicy like stone ground. Then I got a mixture of cracked mustard seed and ground coriander. Then you're going to need a, a beer I didn't have any full strength beer today, but we're going to go ahead and use what I drink. And uh, then we have our Dow Strong knife here today. And this is the new one, and I'm going to show it to you. This is the deflector from Dow Strong. If you'd like to check out any of their products, I'm going to leave you a link right down in the description box to their website. There's hundreds and hundreds of different styles and different product lines that they have over there. And all of them have been awesome so far that I've tried. Hey folks, let's go ahead and move this point out of the way. We're not going to be using him today. We're going to make pastrami out of him. I'll put him on the smoker. And that's all pastrami is, is a smoked corned beef. If you didn't know that before. And if you'd like to see how we made one from a corned beef, we'll leave you a link to a video right up above. All right, we're gonna go in with our, our uh, this is our ground coriander and ground mustard seed. I'm gonna sprinkle it pretty good on them there. You don't really have to worry about getting too much of this on there, guys. It's going to get diluted in the end. Alright, so I took out the bacon. It wasn't quite as fatty as normal. I didn't have that was just a little I had left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and supplement with that with just a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Actually, that was about one tablespoon. I'm gonna, grab, I'm gonna grab my brisket and I'm gonna put them in there fat side down. Fits in there pretty good, and that'll draw up considerably as it cooks. Now this is here where, where I'm demonstrating this one-line method of charcoal. We put that that cold piece of meat in there, and we've had those coals on that side underneath the, the Dutch oven for a while, so it's kind of 
took some of the airflow off of them, so they're not going to be burning as hot as they would without the Dutch oven sitting on top of them. So we can just move it right over on this side, and now we got a good hot fire. Because we want to try to sear the fat in the outside of this guy. Uh, it's been a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. Got a nice sear on that side. Starting to render the fat. Just like last time, I'm gonna go ahead and move the pot back over to the east side of the coal. So we keep that heat up. Okay, so we browned it on both sides. I got it back up on the top side, which is going to be our presentation side. And now I'm going to go ahead and just rub this mustard, nice layer of it, all over the top of it. Stone ground mustard, awesome. Spicy mustard, if you don't got it, or make your own like we did. Taking a bag of spoon, kind of spreading it out all over it. And I'm not gonna worry about the part down on the down on the bottom, but we got the fat side down now for the rest of the cook. All right, so we got that done. Now we need to get on heat control. Don't want a lot of bottom heat here. So let me move it back over that side. Grab our tongs here. Shoveling some of these guys aside. I want to make a nice ring, just about the diameter of the outside of the pot. Right. Grab my Dutch oven. Right back over there. All right, most of those coals are right on that outside edge. Peek it a little bit. Bring over our lid. Now we're gonna make this large Dutch oven. It's gonna be like a pressure cooker. It's gonna help to tenderize it. Let's go ahead and do our little backwards gourmet method. No coal counting necessary. Because you can see these coals are at all different sizes. You just go all the way around that edge with every coal touching each other. Doesn't matter how big or small they are, if they're touching, you're going to get about 350 to 375 in that oven. And I'm shaking the ash off of it. In the background, we decided to go ahead and put that point on the Weber kettle over there since I had the most of the ingredients already out here and doing the same thing and it was nice and fresh so went ahead and take let's take a look at it what I did I'm doing an indirect okay sitting right in the middle got B&B &B and a little bit of cherry wood going on one side there but heat on both sides I'm kind of doing her hot and fast it's up to 350. I need to choke that off now. And I'll maybe even close that top vent. I'm gonna get that back down about 375 or 275. And that'll be beautiful. So I have out my new Dalstrong deflector knife. It's a really great vegetable slicing knife. Go ahead and toss my cab or cut my cabbage. This knife comes razor sharp and is designed to for your pieces of whatever you're cutting not to stick to the side of the blade. I'm gonna make my slices today. Since we're doing the Dutch oven, I'm gonna do them about half inch thick, and I'm doing it right across that grain. All right. Now some of this really chunky 
stuff like this that's right down at the bottom of the cabbage. Maybe even that piece. You know those dry pieces? I'm going to go ahead and leave those out. I'll stick more with the uh, pieces there. Go smaller. I mean, if you're going to throw it a cock, crock pot, it doesn't matter. But our cooking time isn't going to be as long. Let's go ahead and put that in the bowl over here. Now with my t potatoes, go ahead. I'm going to quarter them uh, just to make them cook faster. And uh, they're going to soak up a little bit more of that flavor from the corned beef when they're quartered. If yours are bigger, make them smaller. If yours are tiny ones, like I wish I could have found... Leave them whole, but mine are uh, um, about golf ball side, but I'm on quarter mine, just like that. Now with mine the other day, I'm going to go straight down through the middle of it, and then I'm going to, it's got this little, a lot of these Vidalias this time of year got this little sprout coming out of them, alright? So you have to watch that because they'll start going bad on you. Today, I'm just going to cut straight through them long ways. There's, by the way, there's more of that old sprout. It's delicious. So I'm just going to cut them long ways, right along the lines of the onion. Every onion has its own little lines. What I mean about the lines is these lines right here. Okay, I'm just going to follow those right through it. And I find if you do a cut this way, your onion does not break down as fast. If you cut across the grain of the onion, Especially on stuff like, you know, you, you want to do that on things like, like soups and stuff that you want those onions to completely cook down in. But here, we want those onions to still be in pieces. So when I do them for stews and things like this right here, where I want to still have my uh, onions chunky, then I always cut them with the grain. That's what I call it, with the grain, not across the grain. Back with gourmet tip for the day. Yeah, about 10 minutes got that gourd guy going in there and some of the broth is cooking out of it which is good so what we're going to do now is go ahead and open us a can of beer we're going to pour that down in there and that's going to become our braising liquid just one regular can of beer all we need and then put the lid back on and now you can go do your thing. You ain't gonna worry about it for a while. We've got at least uh, 45 minutes. So uh, I'm gonna go in real quick and check the internals on this guy. Getting really close. All right, we're at 195, 196. We really want to get to 203, but yeah, we still got to get our cabbage in there, and that's gonna take away a little bit of the heat like 200 over here 203 in that one spot but it doesn't only this very end feels very tender but I don't want to overcook it either and we still got to cook the cabbage so let's go ahead and start adding in our onions put those in there we'll try to put these around the peripheries there's our Last time I made this, everybody's like, you forgot the two potatoes. I never had it in mine before, but there's just uh, some potatoes, and we're just going to heat this on top. We might have to start a little bit more charcoal. Don't know. I, we, we'll, we'll just put it back on there for now. And again, I'm not adding any more seasoning other than... I want to put a little bit more of this mustard down in there because it's going to help to thicken up the broth. And I only have about a teaspoon left there, so just go ahead and kind of get that out of my bowl. And uh, this, actually, this uh, cabbage is going to bring over a little more moisture with that too when it starts cooking. So we haven't started any more charcoal yet. And at this point in time, I want to tap that pot make sure I got no ashes coming off and I've used all so far that I've lit you see I've come back and put some of this as these outside ones burn I come in and put some of those ones that we had to the side I put them over there as a second ring on the inside as those outside ones burn down so I walked away from this from about for about 35 minutes 
Mrs. Backwoods got me in the house hanging stuff and man you see how that cabbage got a little brownness on it the water's come out of the cabbage it's nice and juicy but we didn't sit there and boil this thing like your mama's mama used to do you know put that thing in the bowl of water and just boil this all to mush we got a little color on the cabbage let's check the potatoes real quick with the thing with the spatula up there we're done all right so I'm gonna go in here gently brush back our cabbage we had that mustard sauce on top of that corned beef kind of work him out of there didn't have as much real estate as I'd have really liked to kind of keep the cabbage around the edge of the corned beef so but that's all right I'm gonna go ahead and bring him right over on our cutting board let him rest today we're going to use our beautiful Dow Strong Chrysix knife if you'd like to uh, check out these knives please see the description box below I'm gonna go ahead and I'm I'm checking that grain Ooh, and that sucker's hot it's going straight down this way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm cutting 90 degrees to the grain to get my tongs over here because it looks a little bit warm not a little bit, a whole lot warm so go ahead and go into her you can see that mustard that we put on the top it's like a nice little crust there I'm going to cut it kind of thin like I would nah, a little thinner than I would brisket this didn't cook 12 hours but we're gonna go in and give it a check now for tenderness it's really pretty and it should pull apart just like that okay it's not falling apart not your grandma's not your mama's old corned beef but done just like we would cook a brisket for barbecue and it's still got some texture to it it's not just a bunch of mush falling into a million pieces like uh, I don't know a lot of people still cook it like that where it's just strings believe me you learn how to do it this way you'll be glad you did all right, let's go ahead in here and get some of our cabbage which is also is not cooked to mush okay um, you know unlike your crock pot cabbage or your probably your mom or grandma's old corned beef and cabbage there's still some you know some texture to it and do it in a dust oven Dutch oven like this it gives you a lot of nice juices that are going to really complement the dish. So we we'll go ahead and bring over some of our beautiful corned beef on there. Give it a really nice presentation, and we got that that spicy mustard, kind of a crust on it here I'm going to go ahead and just garnish that lift that one up with a baby spring green onion just like that now you remember that bacon from the very first part okay go ahead bring some of that back in here especially right down in that broth and there you go that's uh Corn beef and cabbage done in a Dutch oven. Back with score makes stop.
you want to buy that. I know you do. Wish you guys were here to share this with me. Yep. It's just a uh, fork tender. You see how that Dutch oven kind of browned a little bit of the edges? That's going to give it even more flavor. Wow. So this was super easy to do in the Dutch oven. I got to walk away from it for a while, go do some chores for Mrs. Backwoods in the house. You could do the same thing I can, you know, just because you're not going to have to worry about that Dutch oven overcooking your stuff because that temperature is going to constantly be dropping on you. So don't forget to check out the join button there right down below. You're going to get a lot of special content that the, uh, the average subscriber doesn't get to see. And hit that like button if you like what we're doing. You can subscribe to our channel right over here to see another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right there. And for a whole playlist cooking in Dutch ovens, cast iron, it'll be right up here. We'll see you next time.